All right, let's dive headfirst into one of the most persistent, widely believed, and absolutely bonkers conspiracy theories of all time. That the moon landing was faked. Yes, despite overwhelming evidence, thousands of eyewitnesses, and, oh, the small detail that we have literal objects left behind on the moon that can be observed from Earth, some people are convinced that humanity's greatest technological achievement was just a low-budget sci-fi flick shot in a Hollywood basement. So today, let's take a scalpel to these so-called proofs of a hoax and examine why they fall apart faster than a cardboard spaceship. First, let's address the idea that the entire thing was staged in a studio. The claim goes that NASA, desperate to beat the Soviet Union in the space race, hired Stanley Kubrick to film the whole event. Now let's pause for a second. If Kubrick had directed this, do you really think it would have looked so, well, bland? Have you seen 2001 A Space Odyssey? That movie was gorgeous. If he had faked the moon landing, there would have been sweeping tracking shots, monologues about the nature of humanity, and at least one eerie existential conversation with a computer. Instead, we got grainy black and white footage of two guys hopping around like kids in a bounce house. Hardly a Hollywood masterpiece. Then there's the infamous waving flag argument. Conspiracy theorists love to point out that when the astronauts planted the American flag on the moon, it appears to ripple as if blown by the wind. Aha, they say. Proof that there was an atmosphere. Except there wasn't. The flag was equipped with a horizontal support rod to hold it outstretched, and when the astronauts twisted it into the lunar soil, it wobbled. Because physics still exists, even on the moon. And since there's no air resistance, the motion wasn't immediately dampened as it would be on Earth. That's not a smoking gun, that's just basic science. Another claim is that there are no stars visible in the moon landing photos. This, according to conspiracy theorists, proves that the background was just a set. But anyone who has ever taken a picture at night can tell you exactly why this happens. The lunar surface is brightly illuminated by the sun, meaning that the camera's exposure had to be adjusted to capture the details of the astronauts and their equipment. Just like how a city skyline at night can wash out the stars, the glare from the lunar surface and the astronaut suits meant the stars simply didn't show up in the photos. You'd think people accusing NASA of faking space travel would at least take the time to learn how cameras work. Now let's talk about the shadows. Some claim that the shadows in the photos are inconsistent and must have been created with multiple light sources, proving studio lighting was used. But, surprise, uneven terrain creates uneven shadows. The moon isn't a flat sound stage. It has hills, craters, and ridges that cause shadows to appear at different angles. It's the same reason shadows in your backyard don't always line up perfectly. If you see a shadow conspiracy in that, you might want to reconsider how often you go outside. Perhaps the biggest nail in the coffin for the hoax theory is the Soviets. The U.S. and the USSR were locked in a bitter cold war and an intense space race. If there was even a whiff of fraud, the Soviets, who were tracking the Apollo missions, would have exposed it instantly. Instead, they acknowledged the success of the landings and focused on their own space program. Are we supposed to believe that the same government that kept the Watergate scandal under wraps for all of five minutes managed to silence the entire Soviet intelligence network? Still not convinced? Let's talk about the lunar rocks. Apollo astronauts brought back 382 kilograms, about 842 pounds, of moon rocks, which have been analyzed by geologists all over the world. Their unique composition, isotopic signatures, and exposure to cosmic rays prove they didn't come from Earth. Unless NASA had a secret moon rock manufacturing plant somewhere deep underground, this alone confirms the mission's authenticity. And here's something you can still verify today. The retro reflectors left on the moon. These are mirrors placed by Apollo astronauts that allow scientists to bounce lasers off the moon and measure its distance from Earth. If you have access to a powerful enough laser, you can actually see the reflected beams yourself. Unless NASA is sneaking up to the moon every night to install new reflectors, there's only one explanation. Humans really went there. Now let's do a little thought experiment. If the moon landing was faked, We'd need to believe that NASA pulled off a massive conspiracy involving over 400,000 people, all of whom have kept quiet for over 50 years. There have been zero credible whistleblowers, no leaked set photos, and no deathbed confessions. Yet the government can't even keep a secret about a politician's emails.
The sheer logistics of maintaining a hoax this big are more improbable than landing on the moon itself. So let's wrap this up. The moon landing was real. The evidence is overwhelming. The conspiracies are nonsense. But hey, if you still think the whole thing was faked, I've got a great deal on some flat earth property you might be interested in. Like this video? Hit that like button, subscribe to The Debunkers, and let us know in the comments what wild theory we should tackle next. Preferably one that doesn't make us question humanity's critical thinking skills too much. Have a great one. Thanks for watching The Debunkers channel.